Dana is any form of giving. In Buddhist culture Dana is called one of the major shila where person can get a certain state of mind by practicing Dana. Dana is one of the ancient lineage comes from Buddhist time. Many great king offers various required necessities of Buddhist monk, which was called Dana. Dana is a Sanskrit and Pali word that connotes the virtue of generosity, charity or giving of alms in Indian philosophies. It is alternatively transliterated as Dana. In Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and Sikhism, Dana is the practice of cultivating generosity. It can take the form of giving to an individual in distress or need. It can also take the form of philanthropic public projects that empower and help many. Dana is an ancient practice in Indian traditions, tracing back to Vedic traditions. Dana means giving, often in the context of donation and charity. In other contexts, such as rituals, it can simply refer to the act of giving something. Dana is related to and mentioned in ancient texts with concepts of paropakara which means benevolent deed, helping others, dakshina which means gift or fee one can afford, and bhiksha, which means alms. Dana has been defined in traditional texts as any action of relinquishing the ownership of what one considered or identified as one's own, and investing the same in a recipient without expecting anything in return. While Dana is typically given to one person or family, Hinduism also discusses charity or giving aimed at public benefit, sometimes called Uzarga. This aims at larger projects such as building a rest house, school, drinking water or irrigation well, planting trees, and building care facility among others. The Rigveda has the earliest discussion of Dana in the Vedas. The Rigveda relates it to Satya truth and in another hymn points to the guilt one feels from not giving to those in need. It uses to, the root of word Dana, in its hymns to refer to the act of giving to those in distress. Ralph T. H. Griffith, for example, translates Book 10, Hymn 117 of the Rig Veda as follows, The gods have not ordained hunger to be our death, even to the well-fed man comes death in varied shape, the riches of the liberal never waste away. While he who will not give finds none to comfort him, the man with food in store who, when the needy comes in miserable case begging for bread to eat, hardens his heart against him, when of old finds not one to comfort him. Bounteous is he who gives unto the beggar who comes to him in want of food, and the feeble, success attends him in the shout of battle. He makes a friend of him in future troubles, no friend is he who to his friend and comrade who comes imploring food, will offer nothing. Let the rich satisfy the poor implorer, and bend his eye upon a longer pathway, riches come now to one, now to another, and like the wheels of cars are ever rolling. The foolish man wins food with fruitless labor, that food, I speak the truth, shall be his ruin, he feeds no trusty friend, no man to love him. All guilt is he who eats with no partaker. Rigveda, X.117, the Upanishads, composed before 500 BCE, present some of the earliest Upanishadic discussion of Dana. Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, in verse 5. 2. 3. States that three characteristics of a good, developed person are self-restraint, compassion or love for all sentient life, and charity. Learn three cardinal virtues, self-restraint, charity and compassion for all life. Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, V2. 3. Chandagya Upanishad, Book 3, similarly, states that a virtuous life requires, tapas, dana, arjava, ahimsa and satyavekana. Bhagavad Gita describes the right and wrong forms of dana in verses 17. 20-17. 20 22. It defines satvikam charity, in verse 17. 20. As one given without expectation of return, at the proper time and place, and to a worthy person. It defines Raja's charity, in verse 17. 21. As one given with the expectation of some return, or with a desire for fruits and results, or grudgingly. It defines Tamash charity, in verse 17. 22. As one given with contempt, to unworthy person, at a wrong place and time. In Book 17, Badwad Gita suggests steadiness in Satvikam Dana, or the good form of charity is better, and that Tamash should be avoided. These three psychological categories are referred to as the gunas in Hindu philosophy. The Adi Parva of the Hindu epic Mahabharata, in chapter 91, states that a person must first acquire wealth by honest means, then embark on charity. Be hospitable to those who come to him, never inflict pain on any living being, and share a portion with others whatever he consumes. In chapter 87 of Adi Parva, it calls sweet speech and refusal to use harsh words or wrong others even if you have been wronged, as a form of charity. In the Vana Parva, chapter 194, 
the Mahabharata recommends that one must, conquer the mean by charity, the untruthful by truth, the wicked by forgiveness, and dishonesty by honesty. Anas Asana Parva in Chapter 58, recommends public projects as a form of dana. It discusses the building of drinking water tanks for people and cattle as a noble form of giving, as well as giving of lamps for lighting dark public spaces. In later sections of Chapter 58, it describes planting public orchards, with trees that give fruits to strangers and shade to travelers, as meritorious acts of benevolent charity. In Chapter 59 of Book 13 of the Mahabharata, Yudhishthira and Bhishma discuss the best and lasting gifts between people, an assurance unto all creatures with love and affection and abstention from every kind of injury, acts of kindness and favor done to a person in distress. Whatever gifts are made without the givers ever thinking of them as gifts made by him, constitute, O chief of Burda's race, the highest and best of gifts. The Mahabharata, 1359 The Bhagavata Purana discusses when Dana is proper and when it is improper. In Book 8, Chapter 19, Verse 36 It states that charity is inappropriate if it endangers and cripples modest livelihood of one's biological dependents or of one's own. Charity from surplus income above that required for modest living is recommended in the Puranas. Hindu texts exist in many Indian languages. For example, the Tyrakaral, written between 200 BCE and 400 CE, is one of the most cherished classics on Hinduism written in a South Indian language. It discusses charity, dedicating Chapter 23 of Book 1 on virtues to it. Tyrakaral suggests charity is necessary for in virtuous life and happiness. He states in Chapter 23, Giving to the poor is true charity, all other giving expects some return, great, indeed, is the power to endure hunger. Greater still is the power to relieve others' hunger, giving alms is a great reward in itself to one who gives. In chapter 101, he states, Believing wealth is everything, yet giving away nothing, is a miserable state of mind, vast wealth can be a curse to one who neither enjoys it nor gives to the worthy. Like the Mahabharata, Tyrakaral also extends the concept of charity to deeds, words and thoughts. It states that a brightly beaming smile, the kindly light of loving eye, and saying pleasant words with sincere heart is a form of charity that every human being should strive to give. Dana is also used to refer to rituals. For example, in a Hindu wedding, Kanyadana refers to the ritual where a father gives his daughter's hand in marriage to the groom. After asking the groom to promise that he will never fail in his pursuit of Dharma, Urta and Kama. The groom promises to the bride's father, and repeats his promise three times in presence of all gathered as witness. Other types of charity includes donating means of economic activity and food source. For example, Gaudana, Vidana, and Vidyadana or Jnanadana, sharing knowledge and teaching skills, Ashadadana, charity of care for the sick and diseased. Abhyadana, giving freedom from fear, and Anadana, giving food to the poor, needy and all visitors. Charity is held as a noble deed in Hinduism, to be done without expectation of any return from those who receive the charity. Some texts reason, referring to the nature of social life, that charity is a form of good karma that affects one's future circumstances and environment, and that good charitable deeds leads to good future life because of the reciprocity principle. Living creatures get influenced through danum, enemies lose hostility through danum, a stranger may become a loved one through danum, vices are killed by danum. A Hindu proverb, other Hindu texts, such as Vyasa Samhita, state that reciprocity may be innate in human nature and social functions but Dana is a virtue in itself, as doing good lifts the nature of one who gives. The texts do not recommend charity to unworthy recipients or where charity may harm or encourage injury to or by the recipient. Dana, thus, is a dharmic act, requires idealistic normative approach, and has spiritual and philosophical context. The donor's intent and responsibility for diligence about the effect of dana on the recipient is considered as important as the dana itself. While the donor should not expect anything in return with dana, the donor is expected to make an effort to determine the character of the recipient, likely return to the recipient and to the society. Some medieval era authors state that dana is best done with shraddha, which is defined as being in goodwill, cheerful, welcoming the recipient of the charity and giving without an asuya. These scholars of Hinduism, states Kohler, suggest that charity is most effective when it is done with delight, a sense of unquestioning. Hospitality, where the dana ignores the short-term weaknesses as well as the circumstances of the recipient and takes a long-term view. Xuanzang, the Chinese pilgrim to India, describes many punya salas in his 7th century CE memoir. 
He mentions these Panayasalas and Dharmasalas in Taka and other North Indian places such as near the Deva temples of Haridwar, the mouth of river Ganges and eight Deva temples in Malastanapura. These, recorded Xuanzang, serve the poor and the unfortunate, providing them food, clothing and medicine, also welcoming travellers and the destitute. So common were these, he wrote, that travellers, like him, were never badly off. al Buryuni, the Persian historian, who visited and lived in India for 16 years from about 1017, mentions the practice of charity and almsgiving among Hindus as he observed during his stay. He wrote, it is obligatory with them every day to give alms as much as possible. After the taxes, there are different opinions on how to spend their income. Some destine one-ninth of it for alms. Others divide this income into four portions. One-fourth is destined for common expenses, the second for liberal works of a noble mind, the third for alms, and the fourth for being kept in reserve. Abu Rehan al-Biruni, Tariq al-Hind, 11th century AD Satrams, called Choltri, Dharamshala or Chathrams in parts of India, have been one expression of Hindu charity. Satrams are shelters for travelers and the poor, with many serving water and free food. These were usually established along the roads connecting major Hindu temple sites in South Asia as well as near major temples. Hindu temples served as charitable institutions. Burton Stein states that South Indian temples collected donations from devotees, during the Kola dynasty and Vihayanagara empire periods in 1st millennium. Through first half of 2nd millennium AD, these dana were then used to feed people in distress as well as fund public projects such as irrigation and land reclamation. Mediksara by Vinainsvara is an 11th century canonical discussion and commentary on Dana, composed under the patronage of Shalukya dynasty. The discussion about charity is included in its thesis on Akara. Major Sanskrit treatises that discuss ethics, methods and rationale for charity and almsgiving in Hinduism include, states Maria Haim, the 12th century Dana Khanda book of giving by Lakes Madhara of Kanauj, the 12th century Dana Sagara Sea of giving by Balala Sanya of Bengal and the 14th century sub-book Dainakanda in Katarvar Gakantamani The Gem of the Four Aims of Human Life by Hemadiri of Devagiri. The first two are a few hundred-page treatises each, while the third is over a thousand-page compendium on charity, from a region that is now part of modern-day eastern Maharashtra and Telangana. The text influenced Hindus of Deccan region in South India from 14th to 19th centuries. Three monks chanting in Lhasa, Tibet. 1993 Play media donating in Sule Pagoda. Dana as a formal religious act is directed specifically to a monastic or spiritually developed person. In Buddhist thought, it has the effect of purifying and transforming the mind of the giver. Generosity developed through giving leads to experience of material wealth and possibly being reborn in happy states. In the Pali Canon's Dayanu Sutta, generosity is identified as one of the four traits conditioning happiness and wealth in the next life. Conversely, Lack of giving leads to unhappy states and poverty. Dana leads to one of the paramitas or perfections, the Dana Paramita. This can be characterized by unattached and unconditional generosity, giving and letting go. Buddhists believe that giving without seeking anything in return leads to greater spiritual wealth. Moreover, it reduces the acquisitive impulses that ultimately lead to continued suffering from egotism. Dana, or generosity, can be given in both material or immaterial ways. Spiritual giving or the gift of noble teachings, known as Dhamma Dana, is said by the Buddha to surpass all other gifts. This type of generosity includes those who elucidate the Buddha's teachings such as monks who preach sermons or recite from the Tripitaka. Teachers of meditation, unqualified persons who encourage others to keep precepts or helping support teachers of meditation. The most common form of giving is in material gifts such as food, money, robes, and medicine. Dana is, as with Hindu texts like Mitaksara and Vani Purana and in Buddhist texts, described as a virtue and duty in Jainism. It is considered an act of compassion, and must be done with no desire for material gain. Four types of Dana are discussed in the texts of Jainism, Ahara Dana, Asada Dana, Janana Dana and Abhaya Dana. Dana is one of ten means to gain positive karma, in the soteriological theories of Jainism. Medieval-era texts of Jainism dedicate a substantial portion of their discussions to the need and virtue of Dana. Yashastalaka's Book 8 Section 43 is dedicated to the concept of Dana in Jainism. Dana, called Van Kako, is considered one of three duties of Sikhs. The duty entails sharing part of one's earnings with others, by giving to charity and caring for others. 
Examples of Dana in Sikhism include selfless service and langur. Thanks for watching.